Hello, good morning, and welcome everybody to Morning Brew. My name is Tony Morrow, and thank you for joining us this morning. Whether you're catching us on the replay or joining us live today on Thursday, 7.30 in the morning here on the West Coast, um, 10.30 if you're on the East. Uh, I am so excited today to be able to talk about um, how innovation, creativity, how innovation and creativity can amplify your impact when it comes to combining your project management skills for your organization. And to help us talk about that, my guest, Sandra Wu, is going to be able to explore and describe her experiences in the healthcare industry and describe for you, for us, how you can make that happen. But before we get into that, uh, let's roll the bumper and get into the show. Heidi ho good morning, everybody. My name is Tony Morrow. Again, here with me, joining me. Thank you so much, Sandra Wu. Good morning. Good morning, Tony, and good morning, audience. So uh, first of all, I want to I thank you, Tony, for having me uh, here today. And so I have the privilege to like talk to you and the audience about how I have transformed uh, myself and my career. So you know, very happy to be here. Well, Sandra. So, uh, Sandra, we were going to just ask you to give us a little two-minute origin story as to who you are, because certainly there's many here on LinkedIn or YouTube who may know who you are, but many more who don't. So can you give us a little introduction as to who Sandra Wu is? Absolutely. Okay. So uh, in short, you know, I have uh, 24 years of uh, management experience. I worked in the healthcare sector primarily. Um, currently, I am a member of the Canadian the College of Health Leaders, and I'm a board director of the Hong Kong Canada Business Association. Uh, in my most recent role as the Chief Administrative Officer of the Department of Medicine at the Ottawa Hospital, uh, I was responsible for a broad portfolio um, that includes uh, managing human resources, uh, IT budget, medical education research, and uh, business development. Uh, before working in the hospital, I have uh, worked in Accreditation Canada to implement healthcare standards in the public sector. I have also participated in the world's largest uh, humanitarian network by the working with the Canadian Red Cross Society and the International the Red Cross Federation. I was involved in uh, disaster management and emergency response. But you know, like this morning, I uh, I have to say, you know, uh, myself, my most self fulfilling experience and achievement is to uh, apply creativity and uh, an uh, analytical thinking to na uh, to navigate change for both uh, personal pursuits and also you know at the workplace. Uh, my first degree was in art. You know, I got my first degree in official arts. After I graduated, I started my own art studio as an entrepreneur to teach oil painting. And I uh, did that for 14 years until uh, joining uh, the Red Cross uh, for disaster management and international operations. So, you know, throughout uh, my career development, I picked up uh, like different skills and experiences. Um, so I have learned how the innovation and creativity can be paired with uh, project management skills to create impact, you know, uh, in the community. And I'm very excited today to talk to you, Tony, and the audience, you know, about uh, some of my lesson learned and also observations that I hope, you know, um, will be helpful to the audience and particularly project managers. Well, thank you. Sandra, that is a very interesting sort of backstory. Uh, to go from being a visual artist, running a studio, being entrepreneurial minded and creativity in your focus. Um, and to go from that to the world of art and then transitioning into the world of sort of uh, emergency management, working with the Red Cross, a large administrative organization, um, it's it's perhaps hard to see from this distance the connection between the two. So can you maybe help uh, connect those two dots for us and describe the process or what was it that happened in your life that allowed you, motivated you to make that transition from the world of art to emergency management? 
Okay, yeah. So, you know, like I think I would first, you know, uh, like answer, you know, like what motivated me and then uh, we could talk more about the transition, the lesson learned. So, you know, I was very uh, fortunate that, you know, uh, I had met a few uh, like business leader in the early stage of my career and they motivated me to take up uh, different responsibilities and, you know, work experiences. And they explained to me how valuable it is to apply creative thinking in business and also other fields. Um, to be honest, like I did not fully, you know, uh, completely understand the advice uh, at that time, right? Because I was, I was working as a self-employed artist and I had zero, zero uh, like office experience. But, you know, I uh, decided to, you know, like uh, take a step of faith and I trust God for putting the right people in my life. So with that in mind, I volunteered, you know, at the Ottawa branch of the Canadian Red Cross Society. Uh, it started with a few hours, like volunteer work in a week. And then soon it became a part-time job and then turned into a full-time job there at Red Cross to help coordinate training material and courses for disaster management and emergency response. Uh, the opportunity to work at the Red Cross to participate in humanitarian work and to support projects that brought meanings is a huge significant turning point in my life. Uh, when I Working in at the Red Cross, I helped manage projects funded by the Canadian the federal government, and I learned about like project management, like from my colleagues. I got to see like project management in action, like being executed under chaos and pressure. But most importantly, is I saw how the people at Red Cross, both staff and volunteers, were living out the Red Cross values and also like leading by example. So I was uh, very intrigued and inspired, you know, like by, you know, like uh, by how the way they work and the way they live their life. And then I decided to, you know, to study for my uh, project management uh, destination. And of course, you know, I got my PMP and then I started my, uh, a new chapter of my uh, professional life as a project manager. And then afterward, I'd uh, move on to, uh, I, I got a position at Accreditation Canada. And once again, you know, I was very fortunate. I was working with, uh, working for a director in a project, uh, uh, in um, business development. And he encouraged me to pursue for a master's degree in uh, business uh, administration. So studying for a PMP and an MBA, you know, is a key step that have uh, significantly changed my vision toward the innovations from a, the artist perspective to a leader perspective. So that, that, that sort of step from the creative world to this emergency management world, carrying over your innovative and creative thinking mindset, um, again, upskilling for your PMP and your MBA, and then taking those project management skills, that toolbox, and being able to apply it in this dynamic, changing uh, environment, you know, dealing with these various kinds of emergencies and providing uh, emergency assistance in those environments, really where the rubber hits the road as far as, as, far as providing impact. Um, but you, you moved, as far as your career goes, you moved from the Red Cross into the healthcare industry as a whole. And I'm curious... You know, you went from uh, being an entrepreneur, having agency, creativity, freedom to be able to do what you needed to do to get whatever your objective was done business-wise, artistic-wise. Then you move into a, a larger organization like the Red Cross and then further into the healthcare field. And I'm curious, you, you know, how did you adapt to that change going from... Uh, an independent, creative, innovative mindset to this progressive environment of uh, administration, bureaucracy, and how did you carry over those things into that environment, moving into healthcare, and what kind of challenges did you see? Mm -hmm. So, you know, like I think, uh, uh, you know, like you, you touch a really good point, right? Because like, you know, like, like from having the flexibility, you know, working on my own and then working in an environment that bureaucracy, certainly, you know, the transition was difficult and there's a lot to learn, like no doubt about it. So overall, you know, it has been a journey, you know, in a process 
and often I have to learn by doing, right? Like you cannot just look at, you know, when I study my PMP and MBA, you know, like there is a lot of case study, you know, learn textbook knowledge, but there is uh, you know, nothing better than just learn by doing. And often I learn from mistakes. <laughs> so uh, at one point, you know, uh, I actually thought I have uh, a learning disability. You know, uh, I can give you an example, you know, why I would say that. Uh, when I needed to know more about uh, budgeting and accounting, I could not stay focused, you know, for more than uh, five minutes <laughs> because it wasn't an uh, interesting topic to me, you know, like as an artist, you know, I just, I'm just not used to looking at numbers and I could literally feel a mental block, you know, in my head. So what I did is I took a step back. I, uh, you know, you're going to laugh. Uh, I play video games. <laughs> I do, I play the, like an online uh, exercise, uh, exercises that involve numbers uh, to improve my cognitive uh, ability, right? Because, you know, like I'm not going to, you know, give out a name to, to sell any pro uh, online product, but there is a lot of online tools, you know, for homeschooling, for self-improvement, you know, like to, you know, uh, good for kids and adolescents. And I thought, you know, if they could do it, why not me, right? So, um, so this is, you know, when when I accept accept my limits, you know, I try to find ways to to develop like small little small skill, you know, as I told you is, um, budgeting and accounting, you know, was too big for me. So I would do something that involved numbers just to get the brain, you know, exercise, like get the brain used to the change, the transition. So here I, I think of, uh, you know, four lessons learned from uh, my journey, you know, if, uh, you know, uh, I made to share. So the, the first lesson learned is uh, like be a lifelong uh, learner, uh, always learn something new and different, you know, don't be afraid to learn something very, very different. Uh, if the topics are too big, too complex, right, then break them down into smaller pieces, uh, develop other like complementary skills, you know, uh, small skills uh, to help myself understand and learn other complex in uh, complex uh, topic. And then the lesson learned number two is to uh, to be a good questioner. You know, like always be curious, uh, ask questions in a good manner, uh, uh, and also ask good questions with a uh, catalytic uh, quality. You know, ask good questions that promote imagination, invite other people to involve. Uh, lesson learned number three, uh, always be willing to uh, offer help, uh, go above and beyond. You know, don't think about what I'm going to get in return. You know, think about what I'm going to give to the community, what I'm going to do to serve others first. Um, you know, like with that attitude, it, it is just a matter of time to run into individual who would uh, who would be willing to, you know, to give me opportunity and willing to be my mentor. So, you know, I do, you know, simple math, right? Uh, some, sometimes it's not, I, I don't, I did not get yes all the time, right? Like I could go into a office and I ask help, I ask, looking for a mentor. I ask 10 people, 10 manager and directors, you know, like for help to give me opportunity and only one would appreciate my efforts. But think about it, like one out of 10, you know, like, you know, so, like willing to help me, like that is still a 10% return on investment. And that's a pretty good deal. So uh, the fourth lesson learned, the last one uh, is don't be afraid to ask for help. And, you know, and always remember to pay forward, you know, by helping others when I have the opportunity. So this will be the four lesson learned, you know, that I, um, you know, that I get from my journey and continue to remind myself to like keep living out this uh, um, this value, you know, lesson learned that turn into values. So uh, for those who might be watching, uh, my wonderful dog, Logie, has just decided to join us. So uh, he might be making some noise in the background there. Um, but uh, so we're talking about these 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 lessons learned and, and being able to um, you know, be in a position to be uh, an agent of change, uh, learn and adapt, service mentality to be able to provide provide value to those and continue to give back. So, with those with those lessons those those lessons learned in hand, 
Um, as we move into sort of the later phase of your career so far, which is working in these larger organizations at an executive level in the healthcare industry, I mean, when we think of the healthcare industry, especially recently, you know, there, there's been a lot of complexity and ambiguity when it comes to the environments and the circumstances that healthcare's had to deal with, uh, especially over the past uh, year and a year and a half. How, when it comes from a, from a project management perspective, um, and using your particular approach when it comes to innovation and creativity, how do we take that and apply it in an environment like like the healthcare industry that is traditionally so structured, so administratively focused? And you know, how do we leverage those those elements that you just spoke about that that innovative mindset, the creative thinking approach? How do we take that and apply it? in the healthcare industry? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I'm, I think I'm going to, you know, uh, answer the question, like, you know, from two angles, like two perspectives. One would, the first one is more philo uh, philosophical. And then uh, we could talk about a little bit more about the traditional project management versus uh, um, like scrum methodology. So, you know, like now, you know, like, you know, you and the audience know, uh, know, like I'm an artist. So I would like to, you know, explain things, you know, in a poetic way. So I would like to, you know, uh, give two analogies, right? The first analogy is uh, managing change is like walking in the park, working on stepping stones uh, while checking, you know, uh, double checking our surroundings and looking at our uh, internal uh, uh, compass to make sure that you know, we are standing on solid ground and also heading in the right direction. So in project management, like we we have the, we have terminology, right? We have milestone, minimal viable product, sprint objectives. So uh, the key is, you know, we tend to like have a like we need to develop you know project management plan and look ahead, you know, like you know, couple months or even couple years ahead, and then we just keep going. But I think in the healthcare sector, it's better to have a checkpoint, you know. So I would say once we hit milestone and met a sprint objective, I recommend um, having a the touch point, onless touch point conversation with the team and the clients. This touch point conversation is pivotal. You know, it's, it's an opportunity to catch uh, like potential changes and also barriers, you know, like in the future, particularly in the healthcare sector. The second uh, analogy, you know, I would like to share is work and move like a uh, pendulum for musician. A functioning pendulum like keeps touching one extreme and then right away it moves to another extreme. Mm -hmm. A well working pendulum like does not stay at one end without a balancing act. So the key point is, you know, uh, is is balancing act. The ability, you know, like in business and project management, like the ability to balance uh, between intuition and analysis, to balance between uh, business successes and empathy for others, uh, to balance between um, perfection and prototyping possibility. Right, the ability to perform a balancing act is going to be very uh, critical, you know, um, in the upcoming uh, post -pan uh, post pandemic uh, period, particularly, you know, I would say in healthcare sector, but I think that, you know, in theory, apply to every sector, you know, the balancing, uh, the need to have a balancing act. So I have been like developing and refining like this skill, you know, by constant learning and doing. And I have to emphasize is um, like the ability to perform a balancing act is not like learning how to ride a bike. You know, it's not like you've done it, you learn it, how to do it, you know, back then, you know, and then you could put it aside and then all of a sudden you know how to do it, right? It, it's not like that. It requires constant learning, doing, uh, evolving, fine tuning, like talk to other people, like to to really put uh, uh, the knowledge and experience in the right context. So this is the philosophical answer, you know, like uh, to your question, like how to manage change um, in in you know like uh, in the healthcare sector. So maybe you know uh, you know we could go in, uh, like talk a little bit more about like project management, you know, uh, like how to, you know, uh, my, because uh, I have worked 
uh, as a prod, uh, product manager, you know, uh, in the healthcare sector. So in a way, you know, I, I have experience, you know, to implement the traditional project management for, and also the Scrum methodology. And, you know, perhaps we could uh, have a discussion on that. Well, that, that so, I mean, from my perspective, looking outside into the, the healthcare industry, like many sort of bureaucrat or government based um, and government funded um, industries, it's very, uh, very rigid in its structure. It tends to be very administrative and bureaucratic and, and therefore lends itself from a project management perspective to more waterfall type methodologies. But you talk about Scrum, for example, um, you know, an, an adaptive and flexible mindset, the agile principles. How does that from a like a a tactical perspective how do you how do you employ those methodologies in an environment which naturally doesn't sort of lend itself to that kind of thinking and that kind of uh, ability to quickly execute and deliver value um, without you know volumes of planning in advance mm -hmm. yeah so you know uh, like I I have tried the like the both methodology right so i think the traditional project management methodology is still effective for project types that uh, exist uh, that exist uh, previously right so let's say you know like i think like for construction for certain uh as i say like project type that have done many times before like that works really well right because uh like we can learn from experience and history and the outcome and expectations are measurable uh predictable and therefore manageable like from the project management uh, perspective however you know like our healthcare sector is already complex and in addition you know uh, the pandemic is accelerating change across the global healthcare sector on top of it the changing uh, demographics of Canada, coupled with the tremendous, uh, tremendous demand for healthcare related products, technologies, and solutions, um, represent many opportunities on one hand, but also on the other hand, it requires agile project management and scrum methodology to respond to uh, 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 rapid changes and, and demands you know, in the healthcare sector. So as I mentioned is, um, I, uh, I have worked as a product manager I uh, using the Scrum methodology. So I think um, it is quite a suitable approach to bridge communication between the healthcare team and a technical team. Uh, the way we did it is we do have a two week sprint, you know, like you, you uh, and I, we know, you know, uh, usually sprint is either two, uh, two weeks or four weeks. So we set goals for, uh, for every two weeks and then we, you know, uh, to identify what we wanted to achieve and then we reassess the progress and then determine the purpose, uh, the goal for the next sprint. So I think uh, that has worked uh, really well. However, you know, like I, um, I think, you know, particularly, you know, the line between uh, the technology, the sector and the healthcare sector is going to merge, like, mm -hmm. obviously, because um, but like even before pandemic, you know, like there is um, sort of a, a, a movement toward the virtual health, telehealth. There is a lot of uh, application and solutions try to uh, improve, facilitate and enhance the interaction between the physician and patient, uh, between the, you know, like try to improve um, uh, the integration, you know, uh, within, uh, within uh, between uh, primary care and acute care, and also, you know, uh, pref uh, health prevention. So now with the, the pandemic, it is definitely, you know, like I remember, like recently, I uh, have a conversation with my the physician colleagues, and a lot of them, you know, like they switch into, you know, like they, they are learning to embrace, they're embracing uh, virtual care, they're embracing technology to, to, uh, to automate process, you know, uh, and also uh, interaction with patients. So I think that's why that's why I'm saying is the line between uh, uh, the healthcare team and the technical team is going to blur together, right? So that's why I think the Scrum methodology is working quite well. On 
and yet, you know, like I, I'm not saying Scrum is the best, you know, like it's better than any other, you know, uh, project management methodology. So I would, you know, um, take this opportunity to uh, encourage our audience to check, to go to the Project Management Institute website uh, for the resources, particularly look up um, the new, the, the new uh, toolkit is called Discipline Agile Toolkit. Mm -hmm. So my takeaway, you know, from my experience is uh, be agile and creative, open minded, you know, uh, to different uh, resources. So, you know, there's no single methodology, you know, would work best forever. As I mentioned, give the, the example of a pendulum, right? Once you hit one extreme, it, it will become too much for too long. So you need to actually like look at your situation and think about, you know, like the other options. So. I think it is imperative you know, to engage stakeholders to define what being agile means, what makes sense to the client's organization. But for a project manager, you need to ask your team what makes sense to them, right? So they can be better at the job to serve their clients. Like tools in a toolbox, you gotta pick the right tool for the right problem. Um, and like you described, there are certainly some sort of I'll refer to as like bread and butter issues within healthcare that uh, you've got standardized approaches for. So a more traditional project management approach might work in those those environments like procurement or um, or infrastructure uh, development. Yeah. But when it comes to the more dynamic, fluid, uh, ever changing circumstances of whether it's individual healthcare delivery or the 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 practices that are sort of uh, on the ground in these crazy and crazy times and environments that we're in now, a more agile, flexible, adaptive approach is, is far more effective in providing more value for not only the organization, but of course the patients you're serving. Um, so as we bridge that gap now between project managers working in this healthcare industry and sort of the role that you take now, which is sort of a, you are a healthcare leader, you are uh, fully embedded in the uh, sort of the architecture and the organizational structure of, of leadership within healthcare. How can, how can project managers work in that environment and, and really be sort of, I don't want to say managing up, but how can they add value, be helpful to healthcare overall and to the leaders specifically helping them who may not be as creative and innovative as you are in their mindset, how can they help them add value, be more effective and have greater impact? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that is a very uh, great question. I think, you know, it's a good question to wrap up our talk this morning. So I think, you know, like whenever appropriate, I think the project managers can position themselves as a strategic thinker, strategic partner and an ally to the healthcare leaders and colleagues, whether or not uh, it is directly related to uh, project management. So I suggest, you know, like project manager, you know, first understand what healthcare leaders are concerned about in the upcoming post pandemic environment. Right. Then, you know, it will become clear for project managers to figure out how and where they could support the organizations, uh, leaders and clients in the healthcare sector. Uh, in other words, uh, it is it is uh, helpful for a project manager to know, to understand what keeps uh, the project sponsor and clients awake at night, understand why why the bosses, why uh, the project sponsor are not sleeping well at night because like they, they have a lot in their mind. So once you understand their concern, then then it's better to, you know, again, position them, position project manager, you know, uh, themselves as a ally, as a strategic thinker and partner. Um, here, I would like to uh, reference to a recent report um, titled uh, Guidance for Healthcare Leaders During the Recovery Stage of the COVID-19 Pandemic, published by JAMA um, Network Open. So the report is done by a team of 32 co-authors from 17 uh, countries, selected based on the relevant professional and academic uh, uh, expert. And here I would like to quickly highlight three things uh, that healthcare leaders are concerned about. They need to uh, maximize team and organization know the performance. They need to manage backlog 
of past services and consider uh, improvement while managing, avoiding the burnout. And then number three is uh, like leaders need to promote and sustain learning, innovation, and collaboration. So I think near the end of this morning, uh, of this morning talk show, like I would like to emphasize, a uh, project manager can play a pivotal role in supporting healthcare leaders. Um, I would highly recommend uh, everyone to look at uh, to have a look at this report, and then understand. You know, like like I'm a healthcare leader. Understand what I am concerned about, then it will become the you know uh, very productive. You know, to work together. You know, to try to tackle these challenges from you know with uh, from a project management perspective. It's funny when you you mention those those takeaways from the report, which by the way will have. Uh moments after this uh, this broadcast is done i will add that to the uh, the comments uh on linkedin and we'll put it in the description for uh for all of those of you watching on youtube uh, if you're catching us on the replay you can go find that down below once we're done uh, but i you mentioned for example during our talk your your lessons learned talking about being a lifelong learner asking good questions uh being uh, service oriented, being helping others and providing value and, and not being afraid uh, to be able to ask questions. And it's funny because that I find resonates with those three points as far as not only managing your team, adding value to the team, working through that backlog and better managing that, as well as promoting learning, like that lifelong learning, learning yeah. piece. Um, very interesting that those kinds of takeaways are not only your your lived experience, but uh, sort of formally captured in in things like this report, where we can see organizations uh, needing to adapt those same lessons learned to be able to be more effective, more uh, more capable, and having more impact when it comes to uh, their specific examples. So I, I I find it interesting that that's a that's a theme, or those thematic messages are are, are carrying on here. Um, well, Sandra, so. First of all, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, if folks are looking to reach out to you, uh, connect with you, and contact you, how can they how can they reach out and connect with you? Okay, so uh, I am very active on LinkedIn, right? So if you actually the search uh, Sandra Wu bracket Swo, like Swo is my nickname, S W U, uh, you will. Uh, able to uh, connect with me and then I will be more than uh, more than happy to uh, like to uh, to help out to be a partners you know and in fact you know uh, you know I think the audience could also to reach out to Tony you, yourself uh, you could even like post uh, my LinkedIn uh, um, URL like, on your uh, on your page so you know um, so I think you know, like that is uh, very easy to find me on social media. And again, you know, uh, if there is another topic that you know in a different day, different time, that uh, like Tony, you would like me to like come back and connect with the audience. You know, I'm more than happy to do that. Well, folks, if uh, if you want to be able to connect with Sandra, then then uh, I will add a uh, call out to her in the comments below on LinkedIn after the broadcast done. You'll be able to reach out to her that way by clicking that link and then taking that will take you to her profile here on LinkedIn. And if you're watching us here on YouTube, then feel free to head over to uh, LinkedIn and you can find Sandra there. Sandra, thank you so much for joining us today. I, I really, you know, thank you so much for sharing your experience, uh, not only as an artist in the healthcare industry and of course your journey uh, through the world of project management and now being a, a leader in the healthcare industry. You're welcome. All right, Happy everybody. To be here. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we're going to throw to the bumper now, and we will see you in the next episode.